Okay, in this video, we are going to use the law of cosines to solve a side angle side um, set of givens. So it's definitely a law of cosines problem, um, and therefore to use it, we'll need to know the law of cosines. So law of cosines, hopefully you already know it. We have a triangle, it's got some angles, and the sides opposite those. Um, we do need to know the relationship there. Typically, it's capital letters for angles, lowercase letters for sides, and uh, side opposite gets the same letter as the angle it's opposite. So law of cosines tells us that in this triangle, um, a squared is b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine of a. Um, it also tells us b squared is a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine b. And it also tells us that c squared is a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c. Um, so I like to uh, solve these for the angle. We're going to need to find an angle. Um, so I like to just write these down and then solve them for the angle rather than kind of memorize an additional formula. So you can see in each case here, I'm just kind of like moving things over. And we get that. So these are uh, the many iterations of the law of cosines. They're all basically the same. Um, they're just rearrangements. So uh, I'm going to use the following plan every time I solve uh, the side angle side case. So the plan is this. Uh, first, I'm going to find the side that's opposite the given angle. Um, and in doing that, the number one mistake that I see people make is um, you can't forget to take the square root. So usually if you just kind of look at the magnitude of the answers that you're getting, they're like way out of proportion. Like that third side that you think you found if you didn't take the square root will just be way bigger than it should be. Um, but sometimes it's not. So sometimes it's a little deceptive. So just make sure that you're taking the square root. After I find that side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the law of cosines to find one of the other angles. So um, I'm going to use the law of cosines twice in this problem. And then after I've done that, I could use the law of cosines to find the third angle, which is probably the best idea. But what I'm actually going to end up doing is I'm going to use the fact that all the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So that's how I'm going to tackle the problem. So let's do an example. So A is 24, B is 38 degrees, and C is 19. So definitely a side angle side situation. Um, so what I need to do is I need to find um, the side that is opposite of B. So to do that, I'm going to write down the law of cosines that's focused on side B. So B squared is A squared plus C squared minus 2AC cosine B. I actually know everything on the right-hand side, so it's going to let me solve for the left-hand side. But don't forget that B is the square root of this. So the square root of, and then we just fill in the numbers. So 24 squared, 19 squared fill in a 24 and 19, and then the cosine of 38, grab a calculator, and it tells me that's approximately 14.776. Um, so now that I know that, I know I actually now know all three sides, so I can use the law of cosines to find an angle. I'm going to use it to find the angle A. So A is the inverse cosine of um, A squared minus B squared minus C squared over negative 2BC. And if we fill in what we know, so a key thing here is when I fill this in on my calculator, instead of typing 14.776, I'm actually just using the previous answer because it's the last thing that I found. Or to be safe, you could store that value on your calculator and use the stored value. You want to do that so that the decimal places match up to three decimal places because we always want to go to three decimal places um, unless a problem states otherwise. So this will give me, according to my calculator, about 89.660. So this is almost a right triangle, um, which is kind of interesting. And now to find the third angle, I could use the law of cosines again, which I kind of advocate because it's pretty quick on the calculator. You just have to change a couple numbers. Um, and also then you can check and see if your three angles add up to 180. It's an additional layer of kind of protection as you're doing the problem. But instead, I'm going to use the fact that they add up to 180. So C is 180 minus A minus B. Calculator says that's about 52.34. If you kind of mentally check that, you can see that's about right. That's going to give you about 180. Um, so you're kind of done, but as always with solving triangles, I advocate that you summarize your answers. So make kind of a rectangular array of these things, fill in the values. Uh, your teacher will really appreciate this so that they can check it quickly. Definitely if I'm your teacher, I will appreciate it. Um, so there's my answers, and I'm going to show you a screenshot of what the calculator looked like as I was solving this. So here it is. You can see that I, I just shot, did it all in one shot. Um, and then I plugged in, you can see I used, instead of 14.776, I used all the decimals the calculator was carrying. Um, and then I did that again when I was finding the final angle. So that's how I would solve this. I uh, hope this is helpful and good luck.